Okay, so, so virtual reality. In these, ex in these examples, we're trying to make virtual reality as realistic as possible. However, in many different types of applications, for example, design, product design, architectural design, realistic is not enough. It's got to be real. It's got to be photoreal. And in that particular case, you need a whole new type of rendering technology. So the rendering technology that we were selling, they were running on a GeForce GTX Titan. That performance is really fantastic. However, that level of performance is simply not enough if you want to create something that is really photoreal. In order to create something photoreal, you have to follow photons as it bounces around the room, as it bounces through, as it goes through glass, as it refracts, as it picks up different, as the wavelength of the light changes when it interacts with different surfaces. All of that has to be physically simulated, or your eyes simply will not believe that what you're looking at something is photoreal. Now, in the case of design, it's utterly important. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we're announcing iRay VR. <laughs> iRay VR. Nobody would think that it's possible. This is actually a stunt that I didn't think was possible. The idea that a supercomputer would be used to render a scene taking several hours. I mean, this is no different than Pixar rendering their film and an entire supercomputer is used to compute each and every frame meticulously. And it takes days and days and days to eventually recreate that movie for final composition. This is no different. Here we're creating a scene, we're creating a room, but we have to create it in real time. Well, it turns out that ray tracing simply doesn't have the ability to do that. And so the team created a brand new technology. They basically rendered light probes throughout the area of the room that you would like to interact with. These light probes are basically entire light fields from that spot. How light would emanate from that spot. Each one of these probes is essentially a 4K render, and each one of these 4K renders takes approximately one hour on one box of eight GPU server. One hour. We render a hundred of these probes which means 100 hours were dedicated to rendering the probes that go into this particular photorealistic room. Next, on a workstation with Quadro M6000, it needs to have a really, really large frame buffer so that all of these light probes could be resident in the frame buffer. We then rasterize the scene from the point of the eye to figure out the depth and where, which one of the light probes is the most appropriate to pick off the sample from, which is then mixed, filtered, processed, so that it looks appropriate from that eye. So that eye is picking up the information that was rendered from the combination of those 100 light probes. Okay? And so Quadro M6000 does the rasterization and does the composition. And then lastly, with very, very, very low latency and all the work that we did with VR works and the integration into the head mount displays and the integration into the engine, we can now allow you to enjoy VR in iRay. Now, iRay in VR. Now, the thing that's really, really, really amazing, it's just utterly beautiful. And it's something that you have to go enjoy. But I want you to be able to enjoy here. So let's take a look at this. So this is a head mount display. What you're looking at, what you're looking at is NVIDIA's new headquarter. And in fact, until this was done, until they did iRay VR, I had never been inside my building before. Now this building is designed to be energy efficient. And so all the windows that you see in the ceiling is intended to let light in but just enough light, and the light and the angles of those triangles are designed so that during different times of the year, the light doesn't come into the building and heat up the interiors of the building, making it, making it uncomfortable. And so we're trying to use as much natural lighting as possible. And so the, the rendering of this building and making sure that it's comfortable, well-lit, 
and uses as little energy as possible is really important. And look at this. The polished concrete. I had never been in our building before. All of this is in real time. And it's in 3D. And the lighting is so beautiful. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish this building. <laughs> 500,000 square feet. It's going to house somewhere between two to 3,000 NVIDIA employees. This is their phase one. And that is a building inside a building. It's the heart of the building. You come in through the center of that heart. You park underneath this building. We put all the cars underground because, you know, here, here in Silicon Valley, um, our, our uh, weather is really fantastic. And so no sense, no sense uh, reserving all that wonderful climate just for, just for cars. So we put all the cars underground, and eventually one of these days, all the cars will park by themselves. And so you'll just get out and your car meanders down this ramp and finds a parking space and, um, you know, future building, okay? iRay VR, you guys, this is really incredible. 100 light probes now rendered on a workstation. Well, not too many people have supercomputers, though. Not too many people have supercomputers with iRay on it. You hit a button, it goes off and renders 100, 100 light probes. It goes off and renders light field from 100 different positions. And then you put that on a workstation, you put that head mount display on, and it's rasterizing in real time, and then recompositing from those 100 light, light probes to create this virtual reality environment. Well, this is going to be unbelievable for people who are doing architectural walkthroughs. It's going to be unbelievable for people who are designing cars, people who are doing serious, serious projects. However, virtual reality has taken off everywhere, as you know. Cardboard, Google Cardboard is being handed out to everybody. It was distributed by New York Times. It's available on Samsung Gear VR. It's going to be available on mobile devices all over the world. We want people to be able to enjoy VR irrespective of the computing device they have. And so one of the things that we're going to do, and this is really exciting, we made iRay VR Lite. This little brother of iRay. Basically, the way it works is this. It's not able to render the full 3D as beautifully as iRay VR. However, with just a press of a button, so long as you design in 3DS Max or Maya or whatever design tool that has iRay integrated, with just a press of a button, it creates a photosphere creates a photosphere, and that photosphere is completely ray traced. That photosphere is completely ray traced. You download you know, your plugin, iRay plugin, or it's integrated, and then you download an Android viewer, and you grab yourself a cardboard box, the Google Cardboard, which is fantastically clever, or you get a Viewmaster with a phone stuck in, inside it. You download this app, and you now enjoy VR. We have this experience um, at the show floor. Give it a try. It's really, really fantastic. IRA VR.